now available for pre-order on Kindle. Stop simping in cyberspace. Learn how to avoid predatory females in their virtual con games with Stop Simping in Cyberspace. Pre-order your copy of Stop Simping in Cyberspace on Kindle today. One of my viewers wanted me to do a video on why China is growing economically and doing better than the West in recent years in both online and retailers. Now, the reason why China's economy is so strong, ironically, is due to America itself. And the main reason why China's economy is doing so much better than America's basically has to do with American greed. Now, back in the 1970s, your Richard Nixon opened up China to in a deal that he made and after he made that deal to do trade with China and gave China the most favored nation trade status, this led to the decline of America as an economic juggernaut. Now, one of the reasons why America was an economic juggernaut until the 1970s was because America controlled a large manufacturing base. Now, this manufacturing base of factories all across the country and plants was the reason why America's economy was so strong. Because when you have a strong manufacturing base, you can go out here and create tangible goods that can be sold inside of your country and they can be exported overseas for other countries to go out here and buy. And this was what made America a economic superpower. Unfortunately, many of the manufacturers here in America, they got extremely greedy. And because they got greedy, they did not want to go out here and give union workers the raises that they demanded. And they did not want to give them the safer working conditions they wanted to have in the workplace. So many of your manufacturers here in America, they did not want to go out here and work with American unions, and they did not want to pay the high wages that American workers were receiving at the time because a got kid out of high school at 18 years old up until about the late 80s or early 90s when the 1991 recession hit, could easily make $20 an hour just out of high school at one of these factories and they could practically go out here and buy a home by the time they turned 22 years old. So these jobs paid exceptionally well. A person could again come out of high school starting at $20 an hour and back then $20 was a lot of money and some guys with exceptional skills in the trades, they could go up out here and get jobs that paid 30 to $45 an hour. So an American worker back in the, from up until the early 90s could do exceptionally well. And this led to the creation of an extremely strong middle class here in America. So manufacturing, made for a very strong American economy. Unfortunately, many in America at the top, they were just not thinking about the big picture. All they were upset about were the wages that they were paying these union workers, and they wanted to find a way to get cheaper labor. Now, they first tried to get cheaper labor by recruiting women into the workplace, but still, the costs were still too high for many of these manufacturers. So many of these manufacturers of your cars, your computers, your furniture, and many other durable goods, what they wanted to do was find a way to get the cheapest labor, and the cheapest way to get cheap labor was to go out here and find workers from overseas. But in order to get those workers from overseas, what they needed to do was make a deal with the government. And your communist government of China wanted to go out here and get a deal in order to build their economy. So this is why Richard Nixon made this deal. 
And as a result of him making that deal, we saw many manufacturers of tangible and durable goods take their plants out of the United States as the United States decided to transition from a manufacturing-based economy to a service and consumer-based economy. Now, the goal here was to make the United States a place where the consumers would buy the imported goods and the wealthy at the top would go out here and profit at the expense of the cheap labor that they got from those people overseas. So they wanted to go out here and erode the whole manufacturing base here in America by laying off almost all of the union workers and then go out here and hire the cheap Chinese labor for pennies on the dollar compared to the starting salary of $20 an hour for an American worker and for those who are in the skilled trades making $30, $45, and even $50 an hour starting salary. So they didn't want to pay the American worker. They wanted to pay the Chinese worker who was a part of the People's Republic of China a lower wage, and that's why China's economy wound up growing at the expense of the American economy. But this is all due to the greed of a handful of executives at the top who did not want to go out here and pay the American worker, and they did not want to invest in the American worker, and because they didn't want to invest in the American worker, what they didn't see was the damage that they were doing to America's economy, and this is why China's economy is growing exponentially, because these corporations went out here and invested in the Chinese worker, paying him that wage that is lower than the American worker, getting them to manufacture the tangible and durable goods for them, and then going out here shipping them overseas to Americans who are working for lower wages and paying higher prices for the same product. Meanwhile, the wealthy at the top are profiting, and your China is building and growing a large middle class and that middle class has been built at the expense of the american worker and that's why their economy is doing exceptionally better than the american economy and it's doing better than the american economy because america does not invest in its own people and because it does not invest in its own people that's why america has been struggling for the last 30 to 40 years because instead of investing in manufacturing which is the heart of any economy what your america invested in was service-based businesses and service-based businesses are designed only to supplement a nation's economy businesses like fast food restaurants hair salons tattoo parlors nail salons these are supplemental businesses because your core business as related to any nation's economy is your manufacturing of tangible and durable goods because tangible and durable goods can be not only sold in your country but they can be exported to other countries for other consumers to buy and that's why making sure you have a strong manufacturing base is very important for a nation's economy because if you do not have a strong manufacturing base that can create durable and tangible goods you are not going to be able to have a functional middle class now china's economy has been strong due to america giving it the middle the uh, manufacturing base that allows it to have that strong middle class and this is why many Chinese can go out here and buy a Ford Taurus or a Buick sedan which is something many Americans used to do back in the 70s back in the 80s and even part of the early 90s I used to see many Americans out here working and driving nice cars but you don't see that many Americans driving 
those nice cars anymore because many Americans, their wages have been depressed due to this service-based economy. Now, I learned about all of this back in 1994 when I took a course called Organizational Behavior at my college, and they talked about what would happen to when you go out here and create a service-based economy. And a service-based economy cannot grow but so far because unless you have a manufacturing base that allows you to create those tangible and durable goods, you are not going to have any sort of marketplace to go out here and be able to sell your goods to other countries. Now, your China, again, has been competitive basically because of American greed, American arrogance, and American pride. And your wealthy at the top, they want to go out here and make all of this money and profit at the expense of the American people. And they don't really care about America's economy. All they want are consumers. But what they don't understand is you can't have strong consumers without a good manufacturing base. Because if your American workers are not invested in, they cannot go out here and be the consumers. And that's why America's economy has these really painful recessions and that does not really bounce back effectively because without that manufacturing base to be able to stabilize your economy, you're not going to be able to go out here and have that base to create tangible goods and tangible services because a service-based economy is just not strong enough to sustain a nation. And America is feeling that right now because it used to rely on service-based economies like entertainment. And now com countries like China no longer need or are interested in America's service-based businesses because now that they've got the manufacturing, they really don't care about American businesses like the movies because that's how where a lot of American companies were profiting from. They were profiting from selling these services like these movies out here, but China now has its own movie studios and produces its own intellectual property. So they no longer need to go out here and see Western movies because they have their own manufacturing base to manufacture their own films. So they no longer are interested in importing American films. So America basically screwed itself by being so greedy, wanting to undermine the American union worker, and wanting to try to cut the American workers' wages. Ironically, the wealthy wound up cutting their own throats and cutting their noses off despite their faces. They wanted to get back at the union workers. They wanted to go and hire these Chinese workers in order to be able to avoid dealing with union contract negotiations providing safe work conditions, and making sure that products were up to a certain standard. Unfortunately, what happened was, is that as they tried to cut, call themselves cutting corners, they wound up cutting themselves right out of their own economy, because the service-based economy is extremely unstable, and it cannot sustain America economically long-term. So these wealthy they went out here looking to try to call themselves trying to import your Chinese worker and get them to work overseas for a low wages, but it wound up costing them in the long run because America cannot compete internationally in with a service-based economy and a consumer-based economy. No, in order for a nation to compete, they have to have tangible goods and tangible products that they create that are of a high value to others across the globe and that is what they use as a bargaining chip in order to do trade and commerce and this is something many of the wealthy in America really didn't think critically about when they were back in the 70s taking their factories overseas they did not understand that they had wealth building assets that had value to America and that those manufacturing plants were guaranteeing them a revenue stream. No, 
they sold their revenue stream in order to make so-called bigger profits in the short term, but in the long term, they made America less competitive. And by making America less competitive, this made China more competitive because now they have control over your manufacturing plants and they also now have leverage because with your manufacturing plants in their country, you have to do business on their terms and with your manufacturing plants in their country, you have to deal with their rules. And this is something that many of the wealthy didn't think about critically and because they didn't think about it critically, they didn't understand the damage they were doing to America's economy. All they were thinking about emotionally was they didn't want to pay these union workers, but they're paying a price right now because they were just so cheap and just so greedy. And that greed and that cheapness is why America has not been competitive for the last, I say, 30 to 40 years, ever since the 1991 recession, where your George H.W. Bush wound up losing the election because a service-based economy is just not strong enough to compete in the world because you're not creating high-value, tangible products that can be sold internationally, and your services like movies and television have no real value to people overseas. So American America messed up its economy basically, ironically, due to many of these capitalists being so greedy, and it was that greed that wound up making China a growing and competitive force. Now, many of these manufacturers, in the beginning, they thought they were going to get leverage, but they don't have any leverage anymore. And they don't really, they're not really creating anything innovative or creative to create new marketplaces and new products. So we don't really create anything over here anymore here in America. And that's why China has grown economically and done better in the West because we don't really create innovative products. We don't really create anything that can be tangible and manufactured all across the globe. And if we do create a product, they quickly take it over to China and have it manufactured over there. So we're not building anything tangible, but you build wealth by creating tangible products. But most American companies really don't create tangible anything anymore. I mean, in this Internet age, everything is intangible. But in order to create a com competitive economy, you must have tangible products and you must have tangible manufacturing because manufacturing is how your country grows excuse me and manufacturing is how you build a strong middle class and we have not been investing in america and american people now your donald trump wanted to try to do this but america really does need that kind of investment because that's how you build a strong economy that's how you build a strong country and that's how you go out here and create jobs and create a economic base that makes you a dominant force in the world. Now this was a video requested by one of my viewers and if you want to request a video to be made and I know something about the subject, you can donate to the Cash App, the Patreon, or the PayPal and if I know something about that subject, I will make that video for you. And if you want to go out here and pick up some of my tangible products like those on the SJS Direct imprint that are made here in America, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spencerella Trilogy. You can find all these great books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Revenge of the Cyber Goddess. The goddess next door takes on the threat of a deadly digital diva driven to destroy the world in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Revenge of the Cyber Goddess featuring a bonus pinup and the other two books in the Cyber Goddess saga at online bookstores everywhere today.